Good evening, music fans. Here we are at Philharmonic Hall in New York Mills, Minnesota. It's a beautiful night for a concert. There's not a cloud in the ceiling. And there's quite a crowd out here. Uh, about how many do you think there are, Bob? Oh, I don't know, Pete. Well, neither do I, but it's quite a crowd. And I think they're looking forward to hearing the New York Mills Philharmonic playing against the Danish conductor Heilige Dankesang. And here he comes now, ascending the podium, and the players are all lined up and ready to begin the first inning of Beethoven's Symphony No. 5 in C minor. And they're off with a four-note theme. This is very exciting. The beginning of a symphony is always very exciting, folks. I don't know whether it's slow or fast yet because it keeps stopping. It doesn't seem to be able to get off the ground yet, and it looks like... Yes, it looks like we're coming up to a cadence here, folks. Uh, the violins didn't cut off there. A little trouble with the violins. They weren't watching. And there's that four-note theme again, folks. And another stop. Just can't seem to get this piece off the ground. Now it seems to be rolling a little bit. It seems to be building up. Tell me, Bob, do you think you'd call that four-note idea a theme or a motif? Well, Pete, the uh, technical term would be motif, which he uses to build a theme. I see. Thanks for setting me straight about that, Bob. Well, we're heading into the second theme section here, and we can expect a little modulation down there. Wow, did you hear that, Bob? Somebody down there in the horn section really flubbed that note. That was one of the worst fumbles I think I've ever witnessed in all my days. I think it was number one, wasn't it, Bob? Yes, it was, Pete. That was uh, Bobby Cornell in the first chair, and that's the third major flub he's made this season, giving him a solo average for the season of approximately .247355, which is pretty darn low for a first chair man. You think there's some chance he might be sold to another orchestra? Well, it's hard to say, Pete. Uh, Cornell's very good in the long solos, things like the uh, rock mining off my Anakin Concerto. So I think if he pulls himself together a bit, uh, they'll probably keep him around, although I suppose he might... Well, I think it's development bit. time down there now, Bob. Uh, let's see what's going to happen. The horns are starting it off. Uh, they seem to be in pretty good shape now, and I get the feeling that we're probably going to be hearing a lot of that four-note motif, don't you, Bob? Yes, I do, Pete. So do I, Bob. Well, they obviously are stuck with that four-note motif, and uh, they're going to be fooling around with it for quite a while. You notice it's pretty hot in here, Bob? Uh, yes, I do, Pete. Yeah, I yeah. think the uh, air conditioning has gone off, which is just one of the things... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's something going on down there on the stage, folks. There's something happening down there. It's really building up tension. The crowd is getting very excited. The brasses have come in and the timpani and everybody, and it's extremely exciting. I think we're building up to a fugue. No, the basses are not picking up the theme, folks. It is not a fugue. The violins tried to make it one, but the basses are not following up. No, instead of a few quotes, he seems to be taking the theme and breaking it up into little pieces. Just two notes left of that theme now being thrown around from player to player. And it's getting softer and softer down there, folks. I think they're losing steam. They seem to be running out of steam. And it's just getting a little bit lethargic down there, if you want to know the truth. It's gotten down to one note now. And things are... Wait a minute! The brasses have come in and tried to pep things up. A welcome relief. But I'm afraid to no avail. Things are still pretty somber. Wait a minute. They hear they come again. They're really determined. It sounds very familiar. And I think we've reached the recap, Bob, don't you? There's no doubt about it, Pete. Your average Beethoven symphony usually has a recap right after the uh, second quarter. And this one is falling right into line. Well, let's see if those violins can cut off with the rest of the orchestra and the cadence is coming up. Wait a minute. This time it's the oboe holding the note too long. Wait, he's, he's playing a cadenza. He must be out of his mind. He thinks it's an oboe concerto. The conductor's standing down there. He doesn't know what to do. Have you ever heard anything like that, Bob? I uh, certainly haven't, Pete. I think it was a disgraceful display of lack of uh, teamsmanship. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if Highwood's name wasn't on the roster next season, although I must say that the fans really seem to go for these uh, outbursts of temperament. Well, I always say, Bob, professional music teams wouldn't exist without the spectators. Anyway, we're into the home stretch here with the second theme coming up, and we should be in C minor right up to the double bar. Wait a minute. That's really something, Bob. The piece is billed as being in C minor, and yet it looks like it's going to end in C major. It's really something, Pete. Well, I think it's something that the Composers Commission ought to look into, and I suspect that they will as soon as this uh, gets out. But it looks like it's going to be an ending anyway. Things are building up a little there. The violins have really gotten a hold of things. They're really beginning to roll. And now he's adding all the woodwinds there. He's thrown in all his brass and the timpani. And it's duty all the way, folks. He's got a great piece on his hands here. And he looks like he's really coming into the home stretch. 
So like I said, about wraps it up. Hey, Bob? Yeah, Pete, it's been a good piece. I think he can really have something to be proud of himself here. Wait a minute! The Bruce's are taking the theme! They're not letting it stop! They're taking the theme and running ahead! Bob, this piece is definitely going to go into overtime. I can see that. The crowd is going wild. They're standing up on their feet. They're jumping. They're stomping. They're yelling. And let me tell you that down on that stage, the players are doing a better running around themselves. Nobody, but nobody knows where the theme is. The audience, not the players, nobody knows where that theme is. Everybody is running around, and believe me, it's very exciting. This is the kind of thing that only happens once in ten years, folks. They've got a new theme going on down there. I can't believe it. Bob, do you know where this new theme well, Pete, it probably comes from, uh, uh, no, I don't, Pete. Well, they're tossing it around now. Uh, the woodwinds have it, and then the strings have it. Nobody seems to be able to keep his hands on that theme. It's getting tossed around from player to player, from section to section. And believe me, folks, the audience is just as confused as the players is about who is going to have that theme finally. Wait a minute, the strings have got a hold of it. The strings have got a hold of that theme, and they are not going to let go. What's this? I can't believe my ears. It sounds as if it's another recap. It sounds as if he's going right back to the beginning. If this is true, it's the first time it's happened in 10 years of concert casting. Wait, wait a minute. Those sound like final chords, though. This may be... That may be it, folks. I'm looking down at the referee. Yes, yes, that is it. That is the end of the piece. The players are taking off their helmets, and the conductor has turned around and is acknowledging the cheers of the crowd. Well, it was quite a symphony, wasn't it, Bob? It was quite a symphony, Pete, and I think the fans uh, feel that they got their money for it. So do I, Bob. And I don't think there's any doubt about who won this contest, either. Uh, as a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the critics slap a stiff penalty on some of the players, particularly Bobby Corno. Neither would I, Pete. And, of course, this was a very important victory for uh, Haile Gadankazong since it puts him right up there at the top of the conductor's league. That's right, Bob. That means that he'll be up against the Fargo-Moorhead Symphony in the World 12-Tone Series next month. And uh, let's see, they not only lead the orchestral league, but I think they're unbeaten this season, aren't they, Bob? You said it, Pete, and if uh, Dankazong can win four concerts off them... He'll be the first conductor to earn the pennant since uh, Toscanini. Well, that's quite a challenge, Bob. Now, I think I'd better be heading down to the locker rooms to have a chat with Don Kazong himself. Well, Pete, I think he was supposed to be doing a baton commercial after the concert, but uh, why didn't you give it a try? I'll do that, Bob. So, for now, this is Pete Chickaly And, uh, Bob Dennis. Signing off for the wonderful wide world of notes. <laughs>